we introduced StemSeg, a novel method for instant segmentation in videos. Given a video clip, we want to generate pixel precise segmentation masks for each object in that clip. Most existing approaches for this task can be roughly divided into two categories. In tracking by detection, an image level object detector such as mask RCNN is first applied to each video frame to obtain object proposals. These proposals are subsequently associated over time in a second step to obtain the final segmentation masks. The second category of existing works is based on mask propagation. Here, the ground truth mask for the first frame is known during inference. The task is then to propagate this mask to future frames. For StemSeg, however, we adopt a different approach. We assume that no first frame ground truth mask is available. Furthermore, we avoid the two step tracking by detection paradigm and instead jointly associate pixels across space and time using an end to end trainable single stage network. To do this, we model a video clip as a single 3D volume and learn per pixel embeddings for the entire clip. Our network is trained such that embeddings belonging to the same object form a tight cluster in the embedding space. With this end, we employ a novel embedding formulation and a novel 3D convolution-based network architecture. Given a video clip, our 3D convolutional network produces three outputs for every pixel in that clip. An e-dimensional embedding, a variance for each embedding dimension, and a cluster center heat map. If we consider two-dimensional embeddings, then for the given video clip, we should get a cluster for the horse object and another for the rider object. Mathematically, we define object clusters as Gaussian distributions. The mean of this distribution is the average of the per-pixel embeddings belonging to that object. Likewise, the variance is the average of the per-pixel variances. To supervise the network training, we compute the probability of every pixel embedding of belonging to a given object cluster. For pixels belonging to the object, we enforce the probability to be greater than 0.5. And for all the others, we enforce the probability to be less than 0.5. This can be visualized here. When probabilities are computed with respect to the green object cluster, all the green pixel embeddings have a high probability. Likewise, the same is true when the blue object cluster is considered. For inference, we divide an input video into overlapping clips. Here, we don't know which pixels belong to which object, so we cannot compute the cluster parameters in the same way as we just mentioned. But recall from earlier that in addition to embeddings and variances, our network also produces a cluster center heat map and this is used during inference. For each pixel belonging to an object, the value of this heat map reflects the probability of that pixel being the center of that object. So for the given video clip, we will have a peak in the heat map for each of the two objects. The cluster parameters are then calculated as follows. We first look up the coordinates of an object center. Then the mean is assumed to lie at the embedding at these coordinates. Likewise, the variance of the cluster is the variance value at the same coordinates. Repeating this process sequentially allows us to segment an arbitrary number of object instances. Our training loss is a combination of three components. The first is an embedding loss which maximizes the IOU between predicted and ground truth object masks. The second is a variance smoothness loss which enforces that the variance values produced at all pixel locations belonging to a given object are the same. Finally, the third component is the object center heat map loss. This regresses the output at every object pixel to be the same as the probability of the embedding at that coordinate. Our network has an encoder decoder architecture. The encoder is a 2D ResNet 101 with a feature pyramid network stacked on top. For every video frame, the encoder produces four feature maps at different spatial scales. To effectively learn temporal context from these feature maps, we propose a novel temporal squeeze excite decoder with 3D convolutions. We first stack the encoder feature maps along the temporal dimension. Then, starting with the smallest feature maps, we apply a series of 3D convolutions and temporal pooling operations to learn spatiotemporal features. This is followed by a trilinear upsampling and concatenation with the next smallest encoder feature map. These steps are repeated until the final output is produced. By default, the representations of the embeddings learned by the network are arbitrary. Now it is possible to guide the network to learn useful representations for the embeddings by using the so-called mixing functions. In StemSec, we either use a spatiotemporal mixing function where the output 3D embeddings are modified by adding the per-pixel coordinate locations. 
Here x, y, and t represents the width, height, and temporal dimensions respectively of the embedding. Or we add additional three dimensions, which gives more representational power to the embedding by giving it more degrees of freedom. Now, the three dimension represented by f in this four dimensional output embedding learns arbitrary representation, but with a fixed variance. We ablate the effect of different embedding mixing functions by evaluating it on Davis, UtbBis, and Kitty mods. E in this table represents the dimensionality of the embeddings. For Davis and UtbBis, the free dimension seems to help more than the temporal position coordinates. And for Kitty mods, especially for pedestrians, the spatio temporal mixing function seems to perform the best. This can be attributed to the fact that objects in Kitty mods appear and disappear randomly over time. While for Davis and YouTube West, the objects are pretty much present throughout the clip and hence rendering the temporal dimension to be less effective. Here we visualize the embedding space for Davis and YouTube West when using the XYFF embedding mixing function. On the right, you see plots which show uh, the separation of the embeddings around the spatial and the three dimensions respectively. It can be seen that both the spatial and the three dimensions uh, separate them, separate the instance object instances pretty well. And often the three dimensions complement uh, the spatial dimension when the objects are close together. For Kitty Mods, on the other hand, the temporal dimension provides reasonable instance separation, which has been quantitatively verified in the ablation study that we've seen before. Here in this video, we use the XYT mixing function and visualize the embedding separation between one of the spatial and the temporal dimension in the bottom right plot, where it can be seen that the instances are separated quite well. To show its efficacy, we apply StemSec to multiple tasks related to object segmentation in videos across different datasets, namely unsupervised video object segmentation, where the task is to segment any object of interest across a video without the availability of first frame ground truth mask. Video instance segmentation, where the task is to segment objects belonging to any of 40 categories. Multi-object tracking and segmentation, which is more oriented towards the autonomous driving community, where the task is to segment pedestrians and cars in a video. And finally, salient region segmentation, where the task is to segment all the foreground objects that are salient across a video. First, we apply StemSec to the task of unsupervised video object segmentation. Here, the methods that are grayed out are workshop methods, use heuristic post-processing, and are heavily fine-tuned towards a WAS task. OF tracker and RI tracker are our own optical flow and ReID-based baselines. StemSec outperforms our baselines as well as other published methods, except for UNOVOST, which is significantly slower and use multiple networks, including heuristic post-processing, as explained earlier. Next, we evaluate StemSec on the video instance segmentation task on YouTube WIS dataset. And as, as it can be seen, StemSec outperforms all the existing baseline methods. In terms of average precision, even though it doesn't use uh, any sort of proposals or optical flow network. To evaluate StemSec on the mods task, we apply it to the Kitty mods dataset. Even though the task here is slightly different since objects can undergo faster motion and can disappear and reappear at random points, StemSec performs comparable to the state of the art outperforming it for the pedestrian class. One important observation here is that the number of ID switches that StemSec makes is less compared to the state of the art. And this shows the effectiveness in, of incorporating large temporal volume in our network rather than relying on uh, third party networks for optical flow and re-ID to associate uh, objects over time. Finally, we apply StemSec for the task of salient region segmentation on Davis 2016 dataset. Here, StemSec outperforms all the other methods, even though we don't use any uh, costly post-processing such as CRF or rely on third-party networks for optical flow. To conclude, we've presented StemSec, which is a bottom-up approach for object segmentation in videos. It works on large input volumes rather than individual frames and is end-to-end -end trainable. It does not need any post-processing during inference and is applicable to multiple object segmentation tasks in videos. And we've shown that StemSec achieves state-of-the-art results on multiple benchmarks. Thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed the video and would use StemSec in your line of research.